Hello traders, Gary Wagner here, just before 2 o'clock in Honolulu, 7 o'clock in New York, it is Friday, happy Aloha Friday as we say on the islands, 22nd day of November 2019, and this is uh, the Daily Report for Gold and Silver. I am sorry for being a little bit late in terms of pushing this live, but I think after watching the show and what we have to say, you'll believe it was a significant piece and was definitely worth the wait. Because what we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks was the power of Fibonacci, specifically Fibonacci retracement and extension theory. As you know, for those of you who have been with us for a while, we were able to predict the conclusion of this last rally taking gold to 1565 by about $10 and that was based upon a move that came four months prior to that using this theory. We also defined that last week Tuesday we had a high probability that we would see support and the current correction would conclude. I think that the evidence speaks for itself, and although this week the market did soften a little bit, it is well off of our projected low at 1446. Let's take a look at pricing, and most importantly, our technical studies, because we are long. My recommendation is to maintain your current long position and to maintain your stop. Let's take a look at the prices. Although gold did close with a higher high and higher low this week, it did finish soft on the week as well as the day. Currently, we have gold futures at 1461.50, a net decline of $2.10. With the exception of palladium, all of the other precious metals came down today, palladium bucking the trend up about $12, and that was all within some pretty strong headwinds from the US dollar, the index back above 98.20. As you know, the entire focus on today's show is talking about the use of Fibonacci retracements and to some degree extensions to look for support and resistance levels as well as to forecast upcoming rallies. Now, the chart we are looking at is a simple daily chart and we do have the defined level that we were looking at, what we are labeling as the beginning of a wave four what we want to take note of when we look at this chart, and this of course is a big picture chart, is that since August of last year, when gold was trading at roughly $1,170 per ounce, we hit a bottom and from that point began a series of waves. Impulse, of course, are going to be one, three, and five. We have completed one. We had our first corrective wave two. Then we went into the longest of all of the impulse waves, number three. That took gold about $300 higher. We had a subsequent correction. And last week, we identified the fact that we could easily be looking at a bottom or a conclusion to wave four. And that, of course, would signal the onset or beginning of wave five. Now, to correctly illustrate that, we do want to use a weekly chart because our data set is rather large, considering that we are beginning at the end of a multi-year correction. This comes in at the end of 2015 to the highest price that it is traded to, which is also the high this year, coming in at around 1565. We also identified that the last sequence of Elliott waves started at about 1166, with a wave one, a subsequent correction or wave two, then our longest wave three, about $300, and then finally this wave four. What we wrote about a week ago on Monday was the fact that we were about $11 shy of hitting a bottom, and that bottom that we were looking for last week came in at 1446.10, the actual low on the week or the day, this was Tuesday of last week, was 1466.20. So I say that that would match very, very well. On our daily candlestick chart, it is quite evident and extremely visible in terms of where the bottom came in at. This, of course, is Tuesday right here. And most importantly, how closely it matched up with the predicted low at around 1446. There's no question. From that point forward, we did see this market move higher. We saw it hit a high of about 73, 
and it has softened a little bit since that point. But nonetheless, I think that the key to take away from when looking at this technique and most importantly, looking at the potential to see support and resistance area is that this works rather well. It can accurately predict a support or resistance level with the caveat that that doesn't mean it won't be a false breakout or a tremendous rally. And we can certainly see the ability for a Fibonacci retracement to point out very, very strong levels of support and resistance. In the case of the 38% retracement level, it has well defined a ceiling that has been evident in gold really throughout 2016, 17, and a part of 18 as it hit these triple tops at 1370. We can see that that's pretty much on the money itself. We can also see that when we broke above the 38.2% retracement, we had a large up spike in price, and we see the same thing occurred at the 23.6% retracement. It is for that reason that I put that much confidence in Fibonacci retracement. We did issue a buy signal. We're in roughly at this area. We have our stop in place. And we will look to move the stop higher should the market firm up next week. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We will talk to you on Monday for the next daily update and review. Bye-bye.